Newsweek thinks Joe Biden can be Trump in 2020. Newsweek used to be a respectable magazine but they have gone so far to the left that they have become a joke. They are now pushing Joe Biden as a candidate who they believe could beat Trump in 2020. Check this out. Joe Biden can be Trump in 2020, but will the Democratic Party let him run? Five months, five agonizing months. That's how long it had been since Joe Biden's eldest son, Bo, died of an aggressive brain tumor. For three years, Joe had cared for Bo, an Iraq War veteran and Delaware's attorney general, but by the spring of 2015 he was gone. The pain of his son's death was still raw for the vice president as he stepped behind a microphone in the White House's Rose Garden in October 2015, flanked by his wife, Jill, and President Barack Obama. You could see Joe Biden's hurt, his normally ebullient smile was gone, replaced by a fatigued grimace. Facing a small crowd and live cameras, Biden announced what many had long expected, he would not be running for president in 2016. The longtime senator was not emotionally ready. The grieving process, Biden said, doesn't respect or much care about things like filing deadlines or debates and primaries and caucuses. The former Veep might have beaten Trump in 2016, and he might beat him in 2020, if he gets that far. Biden is well liked by most liberals, he championed the nation's first black president and came out for gay marriage ahead of Obama and both Clintons. But compared with Warren and others, he may seem too moderate, too establishment, too white and maybe too old, he's now 75, to mount a bid in 2020. And if he runs, his progressive rivals will pour over a half-century-long paper trail and inevitably find plenty with which to bludgeon him during the primaries. Via Newsweek.com Supporters say Biden's unvarnished persona is a large part of his appeal which is perhaps why memes about his bromance with Obama, the president is always the straight man, have gone viral. In one, Uncle Joe plants tiny, travel-sized soaps in the White House bathrooms before vacating the premises, because he hears the new guy has tiny hands. It's also why there's even been talk of a Barack and Joe cartoon. Today, Biden is remarkably popular. An August poll showed him with a 74 approval rating among the Democrats being touted for a 2020 run against Trump. Warren was second with 51 percent. And a recent head-to-head -head morning consult survey gave him a 46-35 edge over Trump. If Biden were to challenge Trump, he'd boast impressive credentials. Of the 1,971 people who have served in the U.S. Senate, only 18 have served longer than him. As the longtime chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Biden was on a first-name basis with most of the world leaders before he became Obama's Veep. He spent more than 100 hours with Chinese President Xi Jinping, and heads of state still call him. In February, his foreign policy think tank opens in Washington, and he just co-authored a treatise in Foreign Affairs magazine on how to contain Russia, something the Oval Office's current occupant seems to have no interest in doing. It's also telling that Biden was just about the only white Democrat invited to Alabama to campaign for Doug Jones in his bid to defeat Republican Roy Moore for an open Senate seat. That suggests Biden might have some success with the white working class voters who shunned Hillary Clinton in 2016. Biden's proud of being from a working class family from Scranton, Pennsylvania, and his speeches have always reflected his roots. The best example of Biden's working-class appeal came on the same night Clinton made her biggest gaffe of the campaign. In the fall of 2016, at fundraiser organized by Harvey Weinstein, no less, the former Secretary of State called Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. Meanwhile, Biden was lamenting to reporters that Democrats have relied too heavily on advisors with an Ivy League pedigree. Too many of those leaders can't connect with the everyday lives of the middle class, he told The Washington Post. After Clinton's comments were relayed to him aboard Air Force Two, he said nothing, according to The Post, but appeared to fume. Clinton went on to lose the white working class vote by 37 percent, compared with a 26 percent loss by Obama years earlier. No Democrat is going to win a national election without pulling in more of those voters. 
and no prominent Democrat has a color as blue as Biden's. Biden would be a horrible candidate for Democrats in 2020. Let's hope they nominate him. What do you think about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Don't you forget like, share and subscribe American News Today channel. Thank you for watching.